Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Talent Culture's Tea Chat Radio. The world of work is live now on the radio with Megan M. Biro and Kevin W. Grossman because metal initials count. Come down to the radio. Take my hand to the radio. Welcome, welcome everybody out there in Talent Culture Tea Chat Show land. It is Wednesday, August 19th, 1 p.m. Eastern on the East Coast and 10 a.m. Pacific on the West Coast. And welcome again to another show. We got a great show, two guests today on our show. And with you as always is myself, Kevin W. Grossman, and of course the lovely and talented Megan Embira. Hello, Megan. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tea Chat community. What's happening? It is what's exciting up? to be here. What's up? Well, what's mm. up is I'm thinking we need some new intro music. So just saying, you know me, always thinking, always keeping it fresh. You know what I mean? You're done with you're you're done with with the uh, what's it? The yeah. suburbs, right? Is that the name of the group? Yeah, I've, the suburbs. I've, I've expired on it. I've officially expired okay. on our intro music. So you know. Well, listen. Too. Let's ask ask everybody out there. Ask every, Let's ask everybody out there. Then why don't you guys send us some suggestions and we'll. We'll think about it because yeah. once in a while, Absolutely. as you know, yeah. we mix it up. We mix it up once in a while. But we, if we want a new ongoing one, I'm open. Let's do it. Let's dance in the radio. On. I mean, it's, <laughs> send your entries. Uh, send your entries in. <laughs> sure. Well, I we am could do, thinking that we're going to do that. So I want everybody out there who's listening either live or if you're downloading later, just send us. You know, send us some tweets around music Please. ideas. I've got a couple, Please. but I want to hear from you all. So that would be well, sure. super awesome. We're all so we were talking. Things. We are. We are about the crowdsourcing, and we love, we love our music. So we'd love to get your suggestions. And, and uh, again, every once in a while, we'll mix it up depending on the show theme, too. But we'll, we'll get a new standard going. So in the green room, before we started, we were talking about a couple of things, one of which is that I guess – the uh there's two the first two female seals that are going to graduate actually have gone through training um, which i think is a really big deal which um so That's celebration girl, to that girl power and um be beehive power yeah. as i say but megan you had a story that kind of with, kind of related to that but why don't you share really quick with, with us and then we'll dive into oh. the show Catching up. I actually, believe it or not, I mean, John Merce and I, one of our guests today, have spoken before, but we're really excited that he's on. And, and Danny Rubin and I were just speaking for the very first time, and and you're going to find out soon, but Danny Hill's from a place called Virginia Beach. And, you know, the, the one and only time I wanted to jump out of an airplane, uh, a friend of mine was dating a Navy SEAL. This is a, a few years back. And she's like, let's get away, you know, and I was like kind of feeling like I wanted to get away on a little vacay. So I went along with this idea that I was going to go to Virginia Beach, right? And it was like, if I'm going to jump out of an airplane, I'm doing it with a group of Navy SEALs. Like that is like the only way you're going to get me out of an airplane. Lo and behold, we went, we had a total blast, met a lot of new friends, a lot of new SEALs and their friends. We had this whole community you know, a party going on for about three, four days, block parties. I mean, they go big in Virginia Beach on all that. All three days I wanted to go, the weather didn't hold up. So I never got to go uh. skydiving in Virginia Beach. And it's like it's it, it's like embedded in my brain, that story. And <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has any skydiving stories or any stories about Virginia Beach, but that's mine. So maybe, I maybe have... at some point. I'm going to head back there. And now that Danny and I are new BFF, you never know. You may hear about us. <laughs> you never know. Hey, how about, <laughs> how about, how about skydiving music um, ideas for the show? Absolutely. There you go. So, there you go. So, so listen, real quick, we, um, thank you for sharing that, by the way. Thanks to our friends and sponsors. Real, real quick, Dice Jive, TalentWise, IBM, CareerBuilder, PeopleFluent, SmartSearch, Workable, iSims, 
our social analytics partner, HR Marketer Insight, as well as the Candidate Experience Awards. And next week, not this week, but next week, I will have a very special announcement that um, I will share uh, on the show uh, about about me, but we're going to save that till next week. So um, let's jump in. Let's talk. Yes. So last week we talked about social networking and how and how that helps the job search pay off. This week we're going to talk about why multi generational leadership activism is in. We have, there's a lot of talk about millennials, but we can also there's it's not just about millennials today. It's always about multi generational, and you hear us talk about that quite a bit. And there we can all learn better ways to grow our own talent and leadership skills from the different generation. Engagement is out. Activism is in, and we're going to talk about that with our guests today. So if you're there listening live right now, please tweet along in the stream. And then at, then, uh, at 1.30 Eastern time, we'll jump into the Twitter chat with our guests as well. So, Megan, who's on the show? Well, I'd love a drum roll. Could somebody give me a drum roll? <laughs> All right. First up, we have Mr. John Mertz. He's at Thin Difference on the Twitters. And John is a thought leader, author, and leader to watch in 2015 by the American Management Association. He is one of the top 100 thought leaders in trustworthy business and highlighted as a leader to watch in 2015. He's the author of Activate Leadership, Aspen Truths to Empower Millennial Leaders. And he brings together a cross-generational community, flair to him, inspiring millennial leaders around the world. Welcome, John. You've been a friend of mine in social for many years now, actually. And, and you are you're somebody who's a giver. And how do I know that? Because I've been hanging with you in social for so long. You share, you give, you've got an awesome spirit. Thank you for being here with us. Welcome. Well, thank you, Megan. And and, uh, you've set a great example in that. So thank you very much. And Kevin, it's great to connect here as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. And next up, hailing from Virginia Beach, is at Danny H. Rubin on the Twitters. Danny is a millennial communications expert and author. He's a communication expert and author of the forthcoming book, Wait, How Do I Write This Email? Question mark. A collection of 100 plus templates for networking, job search, and LinkedIn. So you can kind of go check his blog out, right? News to live by. He's, he's always talking about really timely, exciting stuff over there. So what's happening, Danny? Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, and I love the uh, Virginia Beach plug on the the chat. If anybody on the chat wants to come hang out with me at the beach, let's go. Come on, we'll go sit in the sand and uh, sweet. come back. Nice. I'm in. Sweet. Appreciate you letting me be here. Well, welcome. Tell us, tell us, yeah, welcome, welcome. I mean, let's start off with John, and we'll move over to Danny. But, but John, tell us a little bit more about your background and what led you to the topic that we're talking about today. And then Danny, Danny from VA Beach will chime on in. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. So my uh, just a quick background. I've, I have a mix. Of, I always joke that I have two chapters to my career. Uh, the first was in politics in D.C., and the second has been in high tech for the past 20 years, um, and more recently, um, the last 10 years in healthcare, the software industry, uh, focused on on marketing and, and business development. And as I was starting to read a lot about millennials and hiring my first um, team members straight out of college, I got nervous about uh, blowing it. <laughs> and uh, from all the articles that were being um, out in the news about how this uh, generation was so different, um, it really got me to think a lot more about it and what I needed to do and change as a leader. And uh, through uh, writing about leadership topics, uh, really started to, to zero in about three or four years ago, more on this multi-generational and, and really the exciting opportunity I believe millennial leaders present here and are showing uh, and now in the workplace, um, um, which is just uh, very um, energizing for me as an as, as, uh, older generation leader as well. An older generation leader, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> old, man, old man Gen X like, like me, one. John. Old, 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 man, old man Gen X, right, John? Old man Gen X, yeah, well, just like me. A little bit above that edge, but yes. 
It's called a, it's called well, a you baby and, boomer. Well, you and I are running neck and neck. We're talking about labels. It's called yeah. a baby boomer, everybody. <laughs> Get on board. So it sounds like you got swept up into this whole vortex around millennials. And, and let me tell you something. It's as timely as ever. I was talking about it like John was, blogging about it years back, and it's like we're still talking about it. So clearly lots to unfold today. Um, Danny, what say you? What, what's your angle yeah. that led you to kind of become the author and, and expert on millennial communications? So my background, I started my career as a TV news reporter, and now I work in public relations. My whole game is communication skills, and on my blog and in my upcoming book, my focus is helping particularly young professionals, but people of any age, to write and communicate in a way that is focused and um, interesting and also respecting other people's time and doing a better job of explaining your own story so that you can turn heads in unconventional ways. You know, everybody writes a cover letter this way. You need to write it like this instead, and everybody writes an email for a job like this. You need to write it like this instead with pr principles of giving before you get and understanding how to tell your own story in more defined ways. I'm always looking to arm and equip young professionals with writing and networking skills and soft skills, interpersonal skills that will help them emerge from the pack and make an employer say, oh, who is that person? I want to get to know him or her better. What's leading, what I'm hearing though, I'm reading between the lines, and, and Danny, frankly, there's a lot of other people talking and blogging and writing about the same topics, right? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the sort of thing that I'm hearing though about knowing how to communicate right, not wasting other people's time? What's that about for you? So here's an example. I, I'm on a mission to uh, blow up and reconfigure the cover letter for a job application. Right now, we always write, hi, Come my on. name is, Come and on, I'm interested in, 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 the posi in the position of blank. My approach, because I'm a former journalist, is to start the cover letter. The first paragraph should be a story of from your career in which you show how you overcame a challenge and found success, a, t a specific anecdote. Then you introduce yourself, and then you s devote time to explaining why you want to work at that particular company with specific examples of what that company's done based on press releases or their website. So you do a much better job explaining your own ability and also taking a deeper interest in that company. And it allows you to not have to say things like, I have a great work ethic or I'm hardworking. The story sells it for you. And then you show you're actually interested in that particular company. It's not a cookie cutter to 100 different employers. These are the little ways, these soft skills, that elevate us in a place like a job market. Danny, are, are you a digital native? Meaning growing Meaning. up with technology? Yeah, yeah. like where, where do you well, of course. the spectrum? Yeah. Well, of course I'm a, I'm a digital native, but I also really, I think some of, and I, we talked about this on the preview last week, that a lot of these strategies are, are timeless. They, people love good stories. They love when you respect their time. They love when you take time to get to know them and you don't just come around looking to take. So I'm trying to bring some of these classic principles of business or relationship building into the modern era with the tools that we have now. And that's a, a great joy for me because I, I can see how it helps people and how it can make them become noticed and found. You know, prior to that, they were just a face in the crowd. Yeah. So listen, let and that's that's. Uh, do you find real, uh, one more quick note on that? I'm just curious because you got me wondering about this because I hear this anecdotally and I've seen some some research on this. Do you find, Danny, that the, the people that you're working with that there's a the communications deficit even coming out of college? Oh, I mean, tremendous a deficit. Perspective. Tremendous deficit. We're yeah. trained to write in college essay form where it's these bloated yeah. paragraphs and these long-winded, big, fancy words. And I'm all about, talk to me like you're talking to a friend. Let's chop the word count down. We'll rely on your stories. Don't give me any fluff. And rely on hard details, quantifying your success. When you reference something you like to somebody else, make sure you link directly to it, quote from it. Don't be vague. Do not be vague. Yeah. Um, let's, 
Go, John. Go ahead. Jump in. You want to jump in on that? I was going to switch yeah, gears gonna a little say, bit. I think, go that, ahead. I, think this is a, I think this is a great example of how uh, new generation and older generations can really come together. I mean, what Dan uh-huh. was talking about and, and Megan with the, the digital native uh, growing up in that uh, sphere, and then you marry that with the you know small town authenticism, um, you get the right mix because the the old town or the small town is all about authenticity and story and making those deep connections. And by marrying that with the, the digital native aspect, you get the right element. And I think that's what uh, Dan right. is really talking about is bringing out those stories within the cover letters or other interactions that you have. That's an interesting point. What it, yeah, it is. One of the things that, w- that I think we talked about this too, but just a, a quick note on that the fact that we're all, I think it was Gene Meister, who's a thought leader in HR and talent management, had coined it we're digital citizens, all of us are, not even though right. we are digital natives and millennials, that we're all digital citizens today because of how fast we're adopting everything. But let's, let's jump to a little, to another question, John, because um, that relates to this whole idea of engagement is out, activism is in. Can you tell us what you meant by that? And then Danny, we'll let Danny respond as well. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you know, um, the whole concept of being activated or activism kind of has intrigued me here over the last few years. And then more recently when the Weber Shanwick report came out, uh, talking a little bit more about employee activism, it just really, uh, really um, accented the point, I guess, about the, the difference here. And, you know, engagement really is an old standard and it hasn't worked. I mean, we've all seen the studies, 30% or less are, are engaged in the workplace. And so we need to adopt more of that activist uh, mindset, which is really more of an elevated mindset. So if you think about what an, act, what an activid, activist does is that there's some cause or purpose that is really motivating them. And not more than that, it's motivating others to join in. And there's really a clarity of the direction that needs to be taken and why that direction needs to be taken. And then also what needs to be done to move a group of people toward that objective and achieve that result. And I'll just imagine capturing that spirit of activism in a business place, in a workplace, and just imagine what that uh, elevated purpose uh, mindset can do to drive new revenue growth or better customer uh, involvement in building out better products and better services um, and building better relationships within the workplace or the community of people that are gathering to do work um, in uh, in those initiatives. So it is really that shift that we need to make in the workplace. And, and I think we'll see better results than we did in the engagement model. And, and we're really talking about personal responsibility, right? Getting personal about the topic of leadership, which I think, you know, that's a very relevant thing right now in the business world. There seems to be this whole new renaissance happening with regard to this. Do, do you guys kind of agree with that? And, and if so, you know, yes or no, and, you know, what examples of this renaissance leadership, this personal leadership are you seeing out there, whether it's, you know, friends, colleagues, clients, case studies? Um, Danny? Well, from my perspective, uh, personal leadership is, for me, how I am conducting myself in the workplace and taking advantage of the people and resources around me. Let me give you a quick example. Where I work at my public relations firm, my parents run the firm. They they are the bosses. And um, so it's a, it's a, it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic for me. Obviously my mother sure. and father run the show, but so here's the situation every week. Twice at least once or twice a day, one of them will call me into their office and say, I, I can't figure out this thing on my phone or this thing on Facebook or I, I just don't yeah. can you help me? And so as the millennial, I walk mm-hmm. over and I help right. my dear parents, dear boss, uh, ha- with th- troubleshoot the problem. And it can be easy for a millennial to think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm in the office now. I'm running the show. I understand how the world works. Step aside. Right. But right. I understand Facebook. They understand everything else. Human rela- <laughs> uh, HR, <laughs> client services, billing, hey, contracts, funny. agreements. Right? Running a business. So there have been yeah. so many times where I 
sit there quietly and watch them do what they do, or I ask questions because eventually I will run the business, and I need to know how to do these things. So it would be so foolish of me to think just because I know what a hashtag is and they can't seem to figure it out means that right. their time, like, it's like their time is over. If nonsense. I think it's a huge <laughs> opportunity for me and for people my age, 20s and 30s, to really gain from these people who have been working for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and figure out how it's supposed to go when it's our turn. Right. Hey, Danny. Yeah, just, Danny, it's not rocket science. Let's, let's, let's no. all work with each other. It's not. This is an adoption issue. It's more of a behavior issue. Um, yeah. Is it a generational issue anymore? I don't really think so. And I've been saying this actually for a number of years. I, I think, you know, this whole talk of, you know, you're a baby boomer, I'm a Gen Xer. You're you're a millennial is just complete hogwash, to be honest with everybody. Yeah. I think you know it's easy, it's sexy, it's a buzzword, it does well on Twitter, but you know I, I feel like we're we're all kind of moving beyond this right now, and I, and I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear that you know we're not going to all because all that's doing is dividing us. Really? Yeah. Right. Sp- speaking, yeah. Of divi- speaking of dividing, speaking speak. Speaking of dividing us, well, first, first, real quick, Danny, you could have your parents talk to me and John. We we got them covered. All right, we, we can help them out. <laughs> okay. uh, please, in that please. Regard. The hashtag sec- just confounds sec- them. Please. Exactly. Okay. Secondly, though, and and I'm John. I want to I want to throw this back to you, and I want to hear both of your perspectives. But I I want to get something that's been a little bit in the news of late, and I want to go back to your whole concept of of activism, John. Mm-hmm. What would you, whether you agree with what has come out and the way that it, the, the, this company has been managed to date or not, wouldn't you, couldn't you argue that what happens, what's going on in Amazon with Jeff Bezos, that, that, I mean, the, everything that he's ingrained since he's launched that company, right, has been about creating better products, better customer service. Mm-hmm. I mean, any thoughts on that? I'm just curious since it's so timely right now. Oh, it is. It's been interesting to read, obviously, the New York Times article and then some of the subsequent LinkedIn posts and blog posts from from different experiences. And, you know, I guess somewhere in the middle of all that, there's there's the truth. And, um, you know, I think it's a really a a wake up call for for many businesses to to really take a hard look at their culture and really understand what they're what they are creating, either intentionally or unintentionally and uh, make make the necessary changes to that. And I think, you know, we get stuck in some of the old models. I mean, there's certain things that needs to happen. Obviously, in a business like Amazon, things have got to be delivered on time because if they're not, you know, customers are going to get upset and wonder why they pay right. for the prime delivery when, when things aren't showing up. But then there's also, you know, some, um, you know, empathy and other things that need to come into the workplace more that brings that human dimension and, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, workplace, again, is one of those outdated terms, I believe, because really it's a, a, a people gather together to do good work uh, for an organization or for a larger cause. And really, that's what a community is. And so right. you need to have that little bit more of a community perspective, I think, within the workplace. It doesn't mean that the work can't, you know, needs to get done regardless, but there's a better way right. to, to do that and than just, um, you know, ignoring, you know, personal challenges that people are going through. I mean, that's where empathy really needs to come into play and right. um, have some understanding there. Well, we yeah, agree. I mean, we, I know Megan and I feel about yep. that too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, here's some interesting recent um, research from actually people fluent um, from over 600 millennials revealed that 80% of millennials want formal mentoring in the workplace. Are you hearing this as well? Don't we find this kind of, either refreshing or ironic. I'm not sure which, which angle, um, to be honest with you, in real time. But, you know, your thoughts on that, Danny? Well, I think that says everything. You know, millennials, as, you know, not to paint with too broad a brush, but think, oh, they, they know everything. You know, they don't want to be taught. They don't want to learn. They just want to come in and they want to run the show. I think deep down, everybody wants to have someone they can ask questions to or learn from, work under, um, sort of guide them along. And I'm not surprised that a lot of people would say that, even maybe privately in a poll, may not say it in a staff meeting. But I think that's really (laughs) instructive. And for people who are managing millennials, you know, be willing to give up your time, offer advice, and then give young 
employees more responsibility, kind of step back, see how they do, if they sink or swim, if they need help, step in, you know, bring them along, uh, don't feel put off by them. But if they're clearly interested in a mentor, and they're so hard to find, and so often with my own career, I, I, I try to spread the questions around. If I have a question about X or Y, I find the right person. I don't have one person in my life who's right. like my lifelong. Right. I think that's hard to find and yeah. a bit unrealistic. But across an office or across Twitter, the Internet, you, LinkedIn, you can find people. And Absolutely. I think one of the best email subject lines you could ever write somebody is, I need your advice. They're going to open it, yeah. and they're going to make them feel good, and it's probably going to be the best that they feel all week. And they didn't even really get anything for themselves. They gave something, and Thank you. that's the, Thank the hidden you so truth. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And to the 50 yeah. people in my e- email box this week that want something and that are mailing me <laughs> their book mm-hmm. yep. in my office, and I have a pile of 75 unsolicited books in my, in my <laughs> office, maybe that's a better approach. Just a thought. Oh, that's, that's to me, that's my, that's my go-to every time. If I need, I'm asking for your advice. I'm not asking for anything more than that. I just want to learn from you. Maybe from that we build a relationship, but all I want is to know what you know. I yeah, think that's a exactly. really brilliant point. John, thoughts on that? We're, real quick, because we're down to, we're down to three, three minutes. Yeah, and I want to make sure to let them talk about their books. But, John, real quick, quick comment on that, and then we can jump to the, the final things. Sure. I think just quickly, I think really mentoring is about sharing experiences. And um, I've learned a great deal from the experiences of the younger generation in, in our workplace. And I hope I pass something on as well. And to me, that's really what mentoring is about is sharing experiences, no matter your age. Uh, uh, excellent. Well, very concise, John. Well, well said, <laughs> both of you. So, so why don't we do, let's do this. We're down to, we're down to less than three minutes. Um, John, why don't you real quick, tell us about your book, how we can get it, what it's, what it's about. And then we'll flip the Danny. Sure. So, yep. So the book is Activate Leadership, Aspen Truths to Empower Millennial Leaders. It's uh, available in uh, most bookstores, Amazon, uh, as we talked about, I guess, earlier, as well as Barnes & Noble yes, and we other did. sites. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but it's uh, it really focused on lessons that Aspen trees have. There's some really great uh, characteristics of Aspens that align w- really well to this new generation and try to bring out some of those uh, concepts and ideas and uh, with also stories from millennials and others of uh, how to really activate those new uh, leadership principles. Awesome. Thanks, Excellent. John. And I, I love Thank Aspen's you, too, by the way. That's a creative approach to the, to the topic. Yes, they so. are wonderful trees. Thanks. Yeah, great lessons yeah. there. And Danny, tell us Danny. a little bit more about, well, Danny, yeah. Tell us yes. just a little bit more about what's doing with, with, with your book. Sure. So the book is called Wait, How Do I Write This Email? Game-Changing Templates for Networking and the Job Search. I spent the last year plus putting this together, some content from my site and others that I've added in. It's 100 plus templates for networking emails, job search emails, LinkedIn templates, how to write handwritten notes, how to talk on the phone, how to write a storytelling cover letter. I just... I'm trying to put everything in there I can to help people become more polished and professional writers and communicators. Everything I've been saying on this chat, if everybody's going down one path, you have to go down the other path, and it often comes down to how you explain yourself in small talk conversation and over email. So I'm really excited about this book, and I hope it helps people as they write these really tricky conversations that often make us nervous to press send. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, both of you, for being with us today. We're going to bring this conversation over to Twitter. And thanks to our community for listening in and participating. We will catch you on the flip side. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Okay. Thank you.